Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Our webinar is entitled Automation Simplified, Using AI to Streamline Contract Management, CPQ, and CLM. This is a fascinating and very timely topic, and it is for a lot of reasons which we will discuss. I'm excited to get started. I'm also excited to check in with our three speakers, so let me quickly check in with them. So first, she's the VP of Commercial Sales for DocuSign. We have Tammy Aguillon. Tammy. Hello, Phil. Hi, everybody on the webinar. Great to meet you all. and glad to be here today. Thanks for joining us. And we also have the founder and CEO of Mobile Force and my good friend, Jagadish Bandhole. Jagadish. Hi, Phil. Hi, everyone. Great to be here. Thank you. And we have the founding and managing partner of Marshfield Consulting, which is a platinum DocuSign partner. We have Scott Brooks. Hey, Scott. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having us here. Looking forward to the webinar today. Thanks. Absolutely. And we're really excited to jump in. So we've got a lot to talk about. Let's get started. And here's our agenda. We'll first uh, provide a little bit of a welcome and intro and uh, poll question. Then we'll hand things over to Tammy. We'll talk about pitfalls of the current quote to cash processes. We'll go to Jagadish. We'll talk about cutting sales cycles with intelligent CPQ. Then Scott, we'll talk about CLM and quote to cash. And then we'll have a Q&A section. In fact, that's a good segue because this will be interactive. So if you have any questions in our audience, feel free to drop those in the chat area of the Zoom and we'll be happy to get to those at the end of the presentation here. So on that theme, let's start things off in an inter interactive way with a poll question. So this is pretty easy. I know we uh, have a handful of folks already out there chomping at the bit. If you all don't mind just answering this simple question, I know Christina is going to tee that up in the Zoom survey area. And when she does, it'll ask this question, is your organization currently using a formal CLM or CPQ solution? Yes to both, no to both, yes to one and not the other. Just let us know. Just take a minute, answer that. And while you do, I'm gonna jump into the next slide because the reason today's topic is so important has to do with the fact that so many of the contracts and documents in companies are sales related. Uh, in many industries and sectors, a majority of documents are sales related. And a study I saw indicated that across all sectors, over 40% of contracts and documents are sales and renewal and account and reordering related. But a lot of the reordering and sales processes still rely upon manual steps. So even though companies have invested in automation and invested in technology, they're still rolling the boulder up the hill for a lot of key aspects of sales and renewal processes. And that's what we're here to address is how companies are making that more efficient. So that sets the stage. Let's see if we have any, do we have any responses, Christina? Yes, we do. So it seems like 60% uh, of folks have either both a CLM and a CPQ or at least a CLM solution. So, and then 40% uh, have neither. So that's interesting. So that's a good mix. And that provides a little context to what we're doing. And we'll talk more about some best practices that companies are seeing with CLMs and CPQ solutions later in the discussion. So with that, let me set the stage in one more respect, which is talking about AI. In fact, AI is what everyone seems to be talking about, whether it's AI or generative AI. And the reason why enterprises are so interested is because of this quote right here. And I, I love this quote. It came out from Jason Lemkin earlier in the year. He said, AI is the hottest topic in the enterprise. Why is that? The reason is efficiency. If AI can cut costs and deliver more efficiency, that's exactly where budget is available in 2023. And I agree with him completely. And that's what we've seen at Mobile Force. And I believe that's what Tammy and DocuSign have seen as well. 
And with that, let me hand things over to her and we can hear directly from her. So Tammy, take it away. Wonderful. Thank you, Phil. Hello, everyone. Uh, I oversee a commercial sales team at DocuSign and um, looking forward to kind of sharing with you and even some of my own personal experiences with the current quote to cash process. Um, before I do that, though, I think I just kind of want to set the landscape for what we're currently seeing um, when we speak to various customers and companies. And it's really interesting, actually, to see some of the poll results that came through uh, just now and what you all currently have implemented or, or don't yet have. Um, first, I, I guess, you know, let's let's talk about why it's important for us to actually look at modernizing the entire quote to contract to cash process. I know we often abbreviate this to quote to cash, but there is that contract process in the in the middle. And that's usually kind of what drives a lot of the inefficiencies that we see. Um, these statistics, as you can see here, we're finding that two thirds of all sales quotes end without a purchase. Um, almost two thirds experience delays in closing business and recognizing revenue. And 45% actually experience inefficient and manual agreement processes. Uh, that basically means your business needs to send out a high volume of quotes just to be able to make a final sale. And if you're a smaller business or small business, this isn't something that you can afford to do. And I would easily say that if you are a large enterprise business, this is something that you um, can't afford to do either, right? Overall, it leads to a slower pace of business, a lower velocity sales cycle, which of course slows down speed to revenue and ability to con collect and recognize revenue. Um, but on the other end, it also leads to a really frustrating customer experience. There's slowdowns, there's errors, lack of responsiveness, and can kind of make it seem like we don't know what we're doing. Um, and that's this is what we've been hearing. This is what we've been seeing from the companies that we've been talking to as well. Uh, if you could skip to the next slide, Phil, thank you. Um, and if you think about, again, what this quote to contract to cash process can look like, um, I can firsthand attest being in a sales leadership position myself at many different companies that sometimes even just seemingly simple quotes or contracts can be just needlessly complex, right? This visual here actually demonstrates a relatively straightforward sales agreement. It could be any SaaS subscription or services product. Um, and it involves a significant number of handoffs and, and uh, delays. So for example, let's say um, there's an AE within your team, they send out an NDA, but maybe there's some delays and that might block them from actually being able to get a proposal out just to get an initial proposal out, let alone potentially multiple iterations. Once that NDA has been cleared up, proposal has been sent, maybe there is some authoring or negotiating of the MSA. That means going back and forth with red lines, might still be using Word or Google Docs. Um, maybe there's even emails going back and forth between legal teams. This overall adds days or even weeks. Um, and I'm, I, you know, I, I feel this from the heart because I've experienced this myself. And when the contract comes up for renewal, maybe in a year or two or three years, the legal team probably needs to dig through repositories, somebody's desktop, or even dare I say a filing cabinet to actually find the right copy, the final copy, which ultimately then again, slows down the renewal and wastes valuable time within the legal team and also is frustrating for the sales team as well. Um, and this can become even more heady when you think about additional contracts, things like addendums, infosec reviews, professional services agreements, maybe there's partner agreements to keep track of as well. And the next slide, Phil. And even more so if the sales, the sales team or legal teams have to access a number of systems in order to get these, this process completed and to complete these steps. And so if all of the data and technology and systems are also manual and disconnected to connect all of these agreements, it's very easy to quickly see where the inefficiencies start to add up and start to be a drag on getting deals done, just like we mentioned before. So where does AI matter and where does AI come in? And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of the buzzword of the day, but when you think about this and how it can actually help support this whole process, you know, we think about this in a, in a few ways. One is to be able to identify contract language and generate summaries. So when you think about AI, perhaps in the CLM context, we want to be able to extract contract language, turn it into identifiable data points. Think about the impact of the day-to-day -day efficiency of a company of being able to leverage the being able to leverage and take advantage of hundreds of trained models 
These models can automatically identify, extract a broad range of metadata, legal topics, everything from business things like renewals to legal topics like governing law, force majeure, um, and then generative AI can also be used to be able to summarize these agreements and help users prioritize and quickly review, um, which provides more context throughout the entire life cycle of a contract. Um, but it doesn't stop there. So if you think about the next step beyond that, you also need to be able to understand the implications. Which of these data points, points are important and why? Because it might be different business to business. So imagine being able to even have clause level risk analysis tailored to your own company's policies so that with the click of a button, you could potentially view the level of risk, not only associated within a given agreement, but even within certain clauses within that agreement. And then thirdly, you should be able to automate and take next steps. This involves the automatic routing of contracts to the right reviewer if you have a um, remote or cross-functional legal team that's in different locations, um, working on various aspects within contracts um, so that they can, get, uh, they can get to actually the right content quickly and be able to assess the risk quickly as well. So for example, routing an agreement to the appropriate business owner when a renewal is coming up, things like that. Um, and then lastly, finally in, in CLM, uh, AI should actually be able to help you predict and inform outcomes. So what's likely to happen and how can you respond? So kind of being a multiplier on your team and helping you think and see around blind spots. AI can be a tool that helps users analyze and report on portfolio level risk, uh, measure business impact and, and potentially help you take action. And the benefits of this and being able to do this ultimately are dramatic. Um, when you can transform your, your contract process, we can see some pretty big changes. And at every step of the way, you're gaining additional efficiency that helps you bring in more revenue, eliminate unnecessary admin work and cost. And then also overall, the most important thing is reducing contract risk during your sales processes over the course of your company as you scale. And here you can see a handful of customers that we're working with already, how they've benefited at each of these stages. Um, this is just one aspect of what uh, we'll be talking about today. So at this point, I'd like to turn things over to Jagadish and he'll talk further about CPQ. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tammy. And with that, let me stop sharing so that Jagadish can take over. Jagadish, take it away. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Tammy. Let me share my screen here. Please let me know if the slide yes. shows. That's Excellent. perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So um, that was excellent. Um, and and double clicking on on one of the aspects that Tammy mentioned there in that entire code to contract to uh, cash cycle is the critical component that comes before the contract, right? Stuff that actually generates those contracts. Uh, a lot of the times when you look at from a CRM to a contract, there's a lot of work that uh, salespeople have to do there. And that's what I'm going to focus on. Uh, so CPQ, as you uh, all might already know, stands for configure price and quote. Um, and it represents an important step um, in, in sort of connecting your CRM, which is what you use for managing your opportunities, to eventually uh, closing out a contract and uh, generating revenue. Um, and there are certain steps that people follow today in the industry. Um, some of it on some CRMs are integrated, but largely speaking, it's, it's fairly manual. There's a lot of manual steps and there's a lot of swivel chairing that goes on um, between um, accessing a CRM system and, uh, and, and a CLM system or an e-signature system that you put in place. Um, and the goal uh, would be to uh, tighten things up, um, make those linkages as smooth as possible, as well as uh, automating that aspect of it. So if you think about it from an optimization perspective, you know, you probably spend a lot of time optimizing your CRM already. This is something that you already have in place. Um, you certainly have probably um, invested uh, a good amount in optimizing templates and your e-signature uh, system, as well as if you're already a CLM customer, I'm sure you you put in effort to optimize the, the, the contract redlining, the lookup and all of that process. So the big piece of it is if you look at it from the perspective of going from a, an opportunity to generating a quote or a proposal, and then eventually 
sending it through uh, the DocuSign uh, infrastructure to, for e-signature and redlining, uh, a lot of that work today is not very well optimized. Uh, a lot of that is fairly largely manual and uh, it ends up slowing down the whole process. So uh, the goal is to enable you to optimize that uh, and do it across whatever CRM you use. Uh, it doesn't have to be one specific CRM. There are some CRMs where uh, you might be uh, um, having access to certain automation uh, ahead of others, uh, but what Mobile Force brings to the market uh, is a very tight integration across all the popular CRMs and the DocuSign e-signature and CLM infrastructure. And uh, where we come in is to sort of tie uh, those two ends uh, with everything in between in terms of providing you seamless access to products and pricing, uh, rules, uh, court rules, uh, approvals, and all of the sales assets in between that making that entire uh, process as seamless as possible. First of from a seller's experience perspective, right? This sort of uh, manifests itself in multiple ways. Um, and a lot of automation uh, has already been done, um, even without AI, um, you know, streamlining the, taking the CRM deal variable, CRM information, and then utilizing it in, in the coding workflow. Um, but we can take it to the next level uh, with uh, the availability of AI in two areas, right? Specifically, if you look at uh, where AI can help, um, it, we look at it from the point of view of assisting uh, a seller in being able to do whatever they do on a daily basis, day in the life, uh, and doing it faster and better and more accurately. Uh, so we kind of think about it more from a co-pilot uh, angle. So one area is really assisting them in, in speeding up that code generation process. Uh, the other area where AI can come in is recommendation engine, where it can learn from quotes and uh, uh, attributes of certain customers, uh, whether it's verticals, whether it's types of customers and what you've quoted uh, to such customers before. And it can learn from that and, and uh, provide you a quicker start uh, to the quoting process by recommending certain products that uh, you may want to think of um, uh, for a particular customer. So in this case, uh, I'd like to get started with um, an example of that in action. Um, uh, we call it Ask CPQ. It's a co-pilot that uh, is an AI-driven co-pilot that uh, uh, assists you with the entire code to contract process, which you can do interactively as well. But this is an example of how AI and automation can actually help speed that up and take it to the next level. So in this case, I want to point out uh, before I get started uh, that uh, um, this is uh, what I'm showing you here is a seller's experience. Let's call the seller Jill. And she works for NAFCOM Security and she is uh, quoting um, uh, their products and services uh, to a prospective customer. So in this case, uh, what Jill does is she comes to the system. This is um, our CPQ uh, uh, interface along with the co-pilot and it is integrated uh, into the CRM uh, that she has in place and also the CLM and the e-signature uh, infrastructure. Uh, so to start with, uh, Jill comes in and says, hey, which of my customers are up for renewal in my upcoming quarter? And uh, within a matter of seconds uh, through the connections, the CPQ goes and, and says, these are some of the contracts in your CRM that's uh, uh, out there up for renewal uh, and uh, you might want to focus on these. And so sure enough, Jill says, okay, let's kind of double click on, on this uh, item number one, Holden Robotics Torrance contract. And what can you tell me more about that particular contract details? And um, at this point, as CPQ goes into your CLM, looks at the entitlements uh, and the obligations and and pulls up all the contract items that are relevant and, um, and gives a very quick summary of uh, what that contract looks like. And uh, sure enough, Jill says, okay, let's go ahead and uh, they wanna renew this, but they do wanna do that without a particular product line item there, angle mounts, they don't wanna include that. And sure enough, uh, within a matter of seconds, the CPQ system constructs a starting quote uh, for Jill uh, with all of the same line items at the same pricing levels and at the same uh, discounted levels, but without that angle mounts line item in there, right? Um, so this looks great uh, to start with. It already uh, made it simpler for Jill instead of her having to go through a lot of these um, 
information uh, seeking exercises by swivel chairing into the CRM and the CLM, et cetera. Instead, she's sitting at one, one interface and it is giving all of that information at the fingertips very, very quickly. And um, it now it gets interesting and now it kind of suggests uh, that, okay, you've got this code, but would you like me to verify a 30-day inventory availability of some of these items? And this is where uh, in this particular case, NAVCOM works with multiple suppliers and they also have an ERP system or an inventory management system that they would like to utilize because they want to make sure that Jill puts out a quote out there that is actually fulfillable. So in this case, it can very quickly connect to uh, either the ERP or an inventory management system and come uh, come back with uh, you know the availability. And in this case, it suggests that one of the items is not in stock and it automatically recommends uh, an alternate um, uh, product that can be substituted, which is, uh, again, uh, one of those things that is a result of an automated rules engine that's uh, working uh, behind the scenes. Um, and so it constructs a, an updated quote uh, with all of this. And uh, at this point, you have a substituted product, but same levels of discount. And um, at this point, Jill says, well, uh, in order to close this at this point, we would like to increase the discount to 30%. And can you do that? And uh, this is where the system automatically uh, keeps track of the rules. And we call these as smart guardrails. And it seems like the revenue operations uh, team has put in place a couple of rules there, which restricts uh, the amount of discount you could provide for a couple of line items. And uh, again, this is not something that Jill needs to remember. It's not something that she needs to refer to. Uh, it's something that automatically gets um, flagged. And uh, um, and if she needs to seek an uh, approval to as an exception for this, uh, the system already knows whom to send it to and it will automatically route the approval request to a sales manager and an operations director to approve the additional discounts. So meanwhile, while that's happening, uh, Jill wants to uh, proceed forward and uh, try and get the deal closed and they wanna get the proposal out to the customer. And so she says, okay, let's go ahead and get this thing um, generated in our preferred format, which is the DocuSign template. And it generates a DocuSign template uh, proposal uh, in, in there. And then um, still with those uh, uh, discounts in place for those two line items while the approval is happening. And at that point, she wants to get it out. And Jill says, okay, let's go ahead and add this to our CRM. Also store this in our CLM, um, make it available for redlining and get queue this up and red, um, get this out to the particular uh, prospective customer. In this case, uh, Rob, uh, uh, Richard Greenfield over at uh, uh, Torrance and uh, get this out. So there you have it. So within a matter of minutes, something that could potentially take hours or days, um, the system makes it really efficient and easy uh, to orchestrate uh, all the integrations with uh, uh, multiple back office systems, but more importantly, the CRM and the CLM systems and makes that entire code to contract uh, to close process as, uh, as quick as possible. Now, having said that, you know, if we did all of that, but if the administrative experience of setting up all of that and managing all of that uh, is very complicated and takes uh, months, then it wouldn't be that attractive. So not only the seller experience is important, we have focused a lot and worked with uh, many, many, many customers to optimize the administrative and op operations experience as well, which is something that works behind the scenes, but really what makes all of these automation possible. Uh, a big part of the challenge today for revenue operations team is to having to kind of manage a lot of the things that uh, you saw in that process, whether it's approvals, whether it is making sure that the quotes are accurate by making sure the configuration options are fulfilled accordingly, uh, whether it's data integration, whether it's uh, getting information from the CRM, uh, deal variables that influence the pricing, uh, making sure that the bundles are configured currently, uh, correctly as well as making intelligent recommendations. When, whenever people buy product A or B, they always buy C, uh, things like that. These are things that in order to put in place takes an inordinate amount of effort and a lot of times dependent on IT teams to be able to go out and, and code all of that. So thanks to our no code platform and automation, we actually take all of that and put the power of, of creating and managing all of this in, in the hands of the 
the sales practitioners and RevOps teams themselves. Uh, we make it all self-service. So the entire administrative experience is also SaaS, not, not just a seller experience. And that goes a long way in speeding up not only implementation cycles, but also time to value for uh, a lot of the customers and um, makes that entire quote to contract to close and quote to contract to cash um, uh, the acceleration reality. Uh, the benefits are profound. We've seen significantly faster uh, quote to close to revenue cycles um, from our customers, um, uh, dramatically re uh, reducing the quoting errors, uh, making sure that uh, quotes are always accurate on, on time. And uh, also in terms of uh, reporting, uh, a lot of that data going back into CRM. Uh, I will wrap up by um, uh, introducing our integrations with DocuSign. We work very closely with their e-signature platform already. We have several customers. Um, we are introducing uh, CLM and CPQ and e-signature integrations to make this entire process as smooth as possible. So please uh, look us up and we would love to talk to you. With that, I will uh, turn it over back to Phil. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Jagadish. And on the theme of implementation, uh, that's a great transition to Scott Brooks from Marshfield. Scott, tell us more about Marshfield and how you help companies implement these automated solutions. Thanks, Phil. Uh, really excited to speak today. Um, I'm here representing a company called Marshfield Consulting. Uh, just a couple slides just about us, if you haven't heard of us before. Uh, we're currently a platinum partner in the DocuSign ecosystem and you know, one of the hallmarks of, of working with Marshfield. Uh, is really our expertise. Um, I'm probably the longest hands-on practitioner of DocuSign CLM in the world, uh, based on my story, which started back in 20, uh, 2008, when I started working for the company Spring CM, which was ultimately acquired uh, by DocuSign and became the DocuSign CLM product today. So we've got a, a great team of folks here over 50 years of experience. Uh, and that experience kind of helps transition into uh, the successful outcomes that we're able to deliver to the customers that decide to work with us um, on their contract lifecycle management solutions. Um, so last year we had a perfect 5.0 CSAT across the board, uh, and this is a survey that DocuSign uh, runs against the clients that are implemented by their partners, um, and our completely kind of onshore U.S. team has to date implemented uh, probably close to 100 customers at this point. So as I get into the, pre the presentation content here, I wanted to talk about kind of CLM and its role overall in the quote to cash process, and ultimately how CLM on its own can help streamline the comp contracting process, but with AI can, can do so uh, even more. So what we see here is kind of a traditional sales funnel process and more than likely uh, folks on the phone have uh, already invested in, in maybe marketing automation system, maybe a CRM, maybe even a CPQ system. Um, but as we look at this continuum, what it does is a great job of is, is showing kind of the sales process, right? It does probably a less great job kind of describing kind of where the contracting motions really occur here because what we see, you know, where is the CLM, right, in our sales process? And if we kind of deep dive into the sales proposal kind of transition to close, right, we see a lot of activity, right, that takes place there even after you've maybe received a verbal commit. So the close, you know, ends up moving over to the right and the CLM processes that need to take place, you know, end up kind of sitting there in the middle. And what we see is, you know, a lot of, a lot of customers are kind of doing CLM processes fairly informally, kind of using email and other tools today. But what we wanted to talk about is, you know, if you were to invest in a CLM tool or doing so today, what are the stages of the CLM process you need to be considering? And with each of those stages, what are some of the considerations, right? As you, uh, again, maybe are using CLM today or are prospecting today to look for something in the future. So really on this continuum is really the prepare, which is the contract generation or capture, uh, handling the back and forth negotiation, uh, approving T's and C's, uh, signing the contract, getting that executed um, by the counterparty as well as your internal authorized signer, right? And then the last part, which is filing that contract in the repository and having a place where you can manage the obligation contained uh, there in the contract. So as we kind of deep dive into each of the different stages on the CLM journey, we start first with preparing the contract. So this is really all about creating or capturing a sales contract and ideally through self-service capabilities. Uh, we see a lot of lawyers, a lot of rev ops or sales operations folks today kind of doing the heavy lifting around contract generation, which is, you know, a human error prone process. And what we want to do here is generate these, this idea of templates, right? Obviously, the sale order itself, uh, potentially the MSA, 
but you have you know MSAs, DPAs, NDAs, SOWs, kind of this letter soup of other agreements that fully round out the sales process. And your CLM tool uh, certainly needs to take care of the, the revenue generating order form document, but also these other agreements as well, right? To, to create a, a, a well-rounded uh, sales process. You also have those situations where uh, we try and put forth our own agreements, but the counterparty pushes back, right? And asks to negotiate their contract. So your CLM tool needs to be able to generate the agreements that you can use um, on your paper, uh, but at the same time for those situations need to be able to accept third-party contracts for negotiation as well. And what we just saw with uh, Mobile Force's demonstration is that sometimes DocGen takes place outside of CLM, uh, maybe through an upstream system or, or through some other best of breed tool such as Mobile Force, and your CLM tool needs to be able to be adapted, right? It needs to have robust APIs and integration ability and other connectors that are available out of the box so that you can uh, work with the tools and the kits of, of your choice. Redlining, redlining and negotiating the contract, I would say, is, is kind of a necessary evil, right? Most in the sales CPQ world are trying to get to a very transactional model where they generate the agreement, send it out for signature, and everything happens. But in, in the practical world, right, we see that there are many times where your customers are large, uh, strategic, and certainly want to put their fingerprints on the agreements. So you definitely need a way for those agreements to kind of manage uh, the counterparty experience and be able to exchange agreements with them while remaining intuitive and easy to adopt, while still allowing your internal folks to identify risk, right, in, in what's been um, maybe redlined or been pushed back on your agreements. One interesting thought here in terms of a CLM is thresholds for redlining. Uh, some of the customers we work with have analyzed the agreements and found that they were, you know, spending 80% 80 of their time redlining agreements that are fairly, you know, low in value. So what they ended up doing was created thresholds, right, around redlining and create policy. This creates um, you know, clear rules for sales to share with the customer and, and so forth. Um, and of course, exceptions exist. Um, but this allowed them to streamline their process and go more to that transactional gen and send model for a majority of their agreements, thereby alleviating uh, Beagle's ability to focus on those more strategic deals, the ones that are more complex and of higher value to your organization. You know, again, on this theme around legal, when negotiating a contract and you have many folks in legal, uh, why reinvent the wheel every time when you're keeping, when you basically have to touch the same legal clause, right, in these agreements that everyone wants to push back on, right? Uh, so one definitely thing for a CLM to look for is its ability for your legal team to kind of create, manage, and share amongst themselves a best practices clause library or playbook, right? So you can easily redline agreements, uh, draw from the approved legal language, those fallbacks that you've been creating, uh, and that's certainly something to help kind of optimize and streamline the overall process. Now, in CPQ, your commercial approvals mo mostly are taking place in the CPQ itself. This is around discounting, right, or other rules that you may be able to identify as you build your quote. But as, as soon as you get into redlining, there are other approvals that have to take place, and this is more around the T's and C's and the contract language. So when going through the, the redlining motions, right, your CLM should have a very clear and defined process for reviewing and, and, and approving these contracts, uh, while still maintaining a level of transparency so that your sales folks are able to look into the black box, which is the contract review process. This also is a very interesting area and one that's emerging around how AI can start to be leveraged as part of the CLM process. And as we saw in Tammy's presentation, right, the ability for DocuSign to parse and pull from the agreements key terms, right, that, that allow you to, one, search against those terms later on once the contract's been executed, but can be used here as part of the approval process. So if you're able to build a scorecard and evaluate the language in the agreements, um, I kind of view this like, uh, where AI is being used today in the medical field uh, in, in reviewing and helping flag, uh, you know, certain x-rays for, you know, cancer or, or other use cases. In the same way, DocuSign's will take your document and help identify these are the contracts that you need to look at maybe a little bit more, right? It's not replacing humans. It's really becoming a tool in the toolkit and can be implemented in the tool to leverage these scorecards, which help identify risk and automate routing rules in the workflow process. This contract has red lines in the financial section, so therefore it's automatically going to be routed to uh, our CFO or whoever would, would be in that position to review the agreements. So definitely something uh, to do both um, in a manual sense today, but also as AI uh, develops and matures, certainly something to look for uh, to extend as part of your CLM approval process. Signing contracts, fairly self-explanatory. This, um, you know, I guess in recent years has certainly taken hold and we see a lot of uh, folks using this to expedite the, the time between sending and signing. 
Uh, one thing to consider here is assigning authority matrix, right? We work with many organizations that have rules around which entities sign or signs for which, uh, what dollar amounts need to be signed and which people, and your CLM tool should have the ability to implement that as part of your process. So a sales user sending things out for signature doesn't have to know who signs our agreements. The system can figure that out for them and automatically default that signer to whoever needs to be in the organization based on whatever predefined rules exist. You know, one other interesting use case here is, you know, obviously the signing process is to get those contracts signed and executed. But through other capabilities of e-signature to capture other data, we see use cases around people capturing PO numbers, right? Or uh, capturing or sending with the contract the onboarding form, right? If you need other information and it's a kind of disconnected process, siloed post-signature, you know, you certainly can consider rolling that into the signature process to further streamline, right, that time from signing to that, that the actual cash part, right, of the of the quote to cash. Uh, lastly, we'll look at the repository, right? And the goal here, once, once your CLM does all these other things around preparing and approving and redlining and signing your contracts, uh, where do they end up? So we want a CLM as well that can function as a secure and centralized repository that helps you manage the contracts and the obligations which are contained therein. So what, what you're looking for here is a CLM that has a central repository that can be your single source of contract truth. Right, and again, speaking to other other points raised by our previous speakers, you want something that's able to um, automate reminders and alerts. Right, maybe there's a notice period, maybe there's a renewal date, and you want those reminders proactively sent to you one, two, or three years in the future. So these are certainly things to consider here around the repository aspects, right, of the overall quote to cash process. So back to our uh, sales contracts funnel here. And with, in terms of work, we're considering using it, uh, we have our sales contracts. And once you've kind of mastered the sales contract process, right, you should be looking for a CLM tool that's able to do all things, right? So I view procurement contracts almost as a mirror image uh, of a sales contract process. And at, at the end of the day, right, uh, the CLM, whatever you decide to use, should be one that, that can be uh, extended, right? Not just the sales, but to all other types of contracting needs in the organization. All right. Well, and with that, I'll turn it back to Phil. Thank you guys for the time today. Appreciate it. That's great. Thanks so much, Scott. We'll get video turned on for our team. First of all, Scott, that was great. Uh, pre uh, it was amazing hearing about the implementation and uh, the great results you're seeing with your partners. And also thanks, Tammy and Jagadish, for your presentations as well. It's very compelling. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll talk about some of the questions that we have coming out of that. Uh, first, uh, let me just remind everyone that if you do have a question, drop it in the Q&A section. We already have some teed up. And for more information from any of the presenters or their companies, you can just follow up with the details right here on the screen. So first question, and I'll start with uh, Tammy and then Jagadish and then Scott will hand it over to you for the second question is, and Tammy, I'll pick up on something uh, DocuSign CEO Alan said yesterday. He talked about DocuSign's mission, reimagining agreements. And he talked about the fact that DocuSign has the largest repository of agreements out there, uh, over six petabytes, which is surreal. Uh, what are the biggest challenges and inefficiencies you and DocuSign are seeing that you are addressing with your CLM solution, and especially this year compared to earlier years? And uh, wh what are you seeing most recently as the biggest challenges companies are wanting to address? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the quote that you shared from Jason Lemkin at the beginning is uh, uh, you know, particularly resonant. It, everybody that we're talking to is looking for efficiencies. And I think it's one of those things that has always been a strong undercurrent, but you know, given the current macro environment, there's been a lot of emphasis on it. And so in um, more you know, various ways, people are kind of using the word efficiency when we talk to them and how do they find kind of find these areas and these gaps that they can that they can plug. Um, some of the things that we're talking about and hearing about and that we were, were able to help drive is one is speed, right? And that's turnaround time from start to finish. I talked at length about this earlier as far as, you know, quote to contract to cash. Um, it doesn't go from quote to cash until you figure out what your contract process is going to look like and, and unbottleneck all of those various inefficiencies. 
Um, then there's productivity. Again, spoke about this a little bit earlier, which is like just the active handling time by staff, by legal teams, by sales teams, by rev ops people, by finance. Um, there's a lot of handling that we're hearing that is still happening. Um, and we can help by uh, having less time in between those handoffs, making them much smoother, more automated, um, improved customer experience. You know, I think um, when we talk about things like speed and productivity, those are inconvenient, but the real thing is that it actually has a real impact on customer experience, right? And so downstream, your customers are feeling it on their end, whether or not you know, you're aware or, or seeing it or not. And I think the most important thing that these you know, quote unquote inconveniences add up to is it introduces risk. It introduces risk into the business. It reduces, you know, we, we talk a lot about how do we reduce the possibility that bad events occur? How do they, how do we reduce the possibility that they impact the business? Um, you know, we talk about reducing um, not in good order percentages of quotes and eliminating errors. So overall, you know, at a at a um, day to day level, it's about increasing speed and productivity. But from a really zoomed out thirty thousand foot level, it's really about improving the customer experience and reducing risk for the company. Absolutely, reducing risk, uh, efficiency, speed. Those themes are recurring. How about you, Jagadish, with Mobile Force and your quote to cash solution, what are you seeing the biggest gaps or efficiencies that companies are wanting to address? Yeah, you know, well said uh, there in terms of reducing the risk, uh, I, I think sort of picking up on that, but specifically in the context of uh, uh, quote to cash or CPQ per se, um, the, what we see um, that customers uh, have struggled with and they're looking to solve, you know, is around things that influence that entire coding process and making sure that you know how do you how do you reduce the risk and also um, you know improve the customer experience which means you know you want to be able to put out accurate quotes uh, and consistent looking quotes that's uh, quickly right and and efficiently so which means a lot of information that's stored in the CRM usually they end up influencing product configurations and pricing you know how you want to price it you know, maybe somebody is a, you know, a particular tiered customer or a large customer versus a medium customer or a small customer. There are a lot of information, there's a lot of information in CRM that influences how you actually set up um, the particular uh, code proposal to look like, what kind of discounting structure you do, et cetera. So CRM deal variables that influence uh, product configuration and pricing, that's that's something that we see. It's it's very manual, a lot of cut and paste, a lot of look up and, and type in again. It, uh, that's something that uh, it, uh, causes a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, the second thing is uh, rules, right? To ensure correctness of quotes, right? So whatever you put out there, you wanna make sure that uh, they can actually be fulfilled and they're, they're actually accurate. Uh, third is we also see um, sort of flexibility in supporting multiple types of pricing. Uh, you know, we live in a very dynamic world, right? And people, uh, prospects, uh, you're looking to close a deal and uh, close a transaction. Prospects have certain needs. You know, they maybe they need more volume. Maybe they, they want to have certain levels of discounts. And how do you kind of craft a win-win proposal, right? Uh, which usually amounts to supporting different kinds of pricing flexibilities, whether it's a volume-based pricing, term-based pricing, tiered pricing, block pricing, or multiple types of discounting. Uh, and I think having the flexibility to do, be able to do that very quickly uh, is something that we're looking to, yeah. uh, that we address. That's some of the things that our customers have looked for. One also one other thing is um, ability to do versioning of quotes, uh, where you know a lot of times what happens is uh, prospects ask for quotes and they want to change a few things and they want to see A versus B or A versus B versus C option one versus option two, and being able to kind of do that very quickly and share it, so that helps speed up the process, helps speed yeah. up the decision-making process. So those are some of the inefficiencies that we've seen. Uh, yeah. A lot of what I talked about is mostly manual today. Uh, it's something that people are looking to automate and, and make it more efficient. Yeah, automating those manual processes and especially related to quotes uh, and pricing and contracts. Let's bring Scott in. Uh, if you can address that theme about the challenges you're seeing, but also speak to the theme of this webinar, which is AI and automation, what are you hearing, seeing, and being asked from your customers and partners? Yeah, 
Um, our focus primarily is on, you know, the CLM tools and as e-signature has been, you know, much more, more widely adopted, especially following COVID and in, in the last few years, uh, really the, what we're seeing with the, the customers we, that we work with is they've kind of tackled first that challenge around how do I get things signed quickly, right? And they've started to adopt these e-signature tools and have started to see, you know, tremendous value out of uh, how they can expedite their sales processes just through use of e-signature. So what we're getting into now with our customers, especially around sales contracts, is how do I bring that same efficiency, those same you know aspects of streamlining the process upstream and into kind of the full end and life cycle of the contract, right? They're starting to make these investments in again the the sales tools that lead up to the the proposal and the contracting processes, and now are officially putting their 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 toes in the water, right, around CLM to start um, expanding upon those things. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest as well around AI, especially in those use cases we talked about, right? How do I take a third-party contract in uh, and have the AI review it for me and identify areas that I need to look at more closely, right? And DocuSign has a few uh, different um, levels or permutations of what AI can do for you, um, depending on the need and, and the, the presence you, you must have within the organization. Um, but a lot of interest, both kind of in the AI assisted capture, right, which is a... Um, you know, eight or nine fields out of the box, right? To help kind of parse these agreements to to the more uh, sophisticated insights product, right? Which which has those 125 extractions that, that Tammy was talking about. Um, but those are certainly things uh, that we look at as part of the overall CLM process and kind of where AI can be deployed and, and where it's most effective for uh, the types of contracts that they're looking at. Um, but generally, but generally speaking, uh, again, just kind of overall, how do I bring that same efficiency to, to my entire CLM, you know, end to end process? Right, and where can I deploy AI where, where it makes the most sense to, to add those additional efficiencies that uh, AI can bring? Absolutely, thanks, Scott. And uh, another question we got was related to complexity, and the question was, how can your solutions support very complex implementations? And the specific query was related to uh, if the company has multiple tools both new and legacy systems that they're pulling from, whether they're ERP systems or inventory management systems or supplier-based systems or multi-party uh, proposals and quotes and contracts. Maybe let's start with Tammy uh, and then we'll go to Jagadish. Yeah, I was actually going to say, I think Scott probably has very firsthand experience with this. Uh, he's often on the receiving end. Um, so I'll, I'll let Scott take this one. Great. Scott? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, there there are certainly a lot of complexities uh, around the different nuances, right? Uh, the different companies end up following for their contract processes, right? Uh, that same kind of continuum of, of gen you know generator prepare, uh, redline approve, negotiate, sign, and store. Those are going to be consistent, right? Really, no matter what your contract process looks like, right? But the complexity is obviously all all the details, right? Um, DocuSign affords you a tremendous amount of, of functionality, right, in terms of being able to um, meet the challenges, you know, head on, um, in terms of having a very adaptable workflow process, right, that handles the, the approval bits, uh, it has very robust uh, doc gen requirements, uh, some of the templates and, and contracts you work with, you know, are, are hundreds of pages long, right, you may actually only produce a five page document, Right, due to all the show and hides and logic that's built in the template, that's based on individual SKUs that are that are being included in your in your order forms. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of ability to address complexity in the contract that you have, ability to address complexity in the approval processes that you may be doing, right? And as you talk about complexity with you know the different kind of systems that both um, upstream and downstream of the CLM tool, right, need to be connected into the process. DocuSign also has an extremely robust API, right? Whether you're pulling or you're pushing data, you need to capture documents from elsewhere, push them or data, right? Downstream the ERPs, right? Or provisioning tools or what have you. Uh, DocuSign has an extremely robust API and, and integration capabilities to address, you know, those very bespoke requirements around um, uh, connecting systems to, to others. Absolutely. And Jagadish, quickly, I know you touched on this in your demo, but how do you and Mobile Force deal with those multiple systems, including legacy systems and the complexities that some companies have? Yeah, primarily two things to add there. Up, we work upstream, obviously. Um, so if you look at it upstream, uh, as they go through creation of the contracts, um, primarily two areas, ability to integrate. So any, um, we address it through a lot of uh, 
out of the box connectors that we've got to back office systems, so CRMs and whatnot. So ability to kind of read and write data from that in real time uh, is, is a key uh, point that sort of uh, ability to extract that information from whether it's new or legacy. If it's legacy and uh, uh, we actually have a pretty uh, well uh, documented uh, recipe and APIs and API based integration can be put in place even with homegrown systems, sort of bring that. And we sort of take that view of, you know, whole is better than the sum of the parts, right? So because you, you you really need all of these systems to work together and that data that's sitting in all those systems to help you put together the best, um, you know, contract and, and code out there. The other piece uh, where we integrate with is obviously downstream. Um, we want to make sure that that information that comes out of the quote goes into the DocGen process, into DocuSign and the CLM. So that's available again, you know, for you to kind of query uh, the next time you come around a renewal or creating a new quote, et cetera. Uh, so those are sort of the two areas we focus on from an integration perspective. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, Jagadish. And let's talk about how companies make sure their CPQ and CRM systems are fully integrated with their CLM. Tammy, can you speak to how does DocuSign work with companies and help them make sure that everything is fully and seamlessly integrated? Yeah, um, this is a really good question. I think, you know, most of what we observe is that the data that's needed to prepare a document actually comes from other systems, right? And so sometimes what ends up happening or oftentimes what ends up happening is that sales reps are required to basically copy information from a CRM into a sales agreement, but a, CR, a CLM tool can actually integrate with your CRM to then automatically populate sales contracts with, with customer details. And so if you can combine pre-approved templates with, with these integrations, the sales teams can then actually streamline agreement generation. They can get approvals a lot faster in order to complete agreements in significantly less time. And again, going back to reducing risk with far fewer errors. And so when you have all of these different agreement systems integrated on a single platform, it makes it a much more automated stream, streamlined and less error prone process for sales teams. Um, they can kick off their contracts much easier, but then also maintain visibility throughout the process too. No, that's great. And uh, that's so critical. Uh, Jagadish, from your perspective, what do you and Mobile Force do to make sure that everything is seamlessly integrated? I know you showed a demo that illustrated that, but what uh, what are the keys and what happens on the back end? Yeah, it's very similar to what Tammy indicated from a contracts perspective, right? So we focus on the quotes aspect. Again, there's a lot of information in the quotes that uh, get that needs to be pre-populated from CRM. People are cutting and pasting all of that information. Um, so to the extent that the CRM connectors can automatically look up and pull that information that's relevant to the particular deal you're working or a particular customer you're working with and bringing all of that attribute seamlessly into the quotes and then utilizing all of the rules and the conditional logic to very quickly, uh, you know, pre-populate or auto-populate discounts or uh, recommended products and things like that um, goes a long way. So our focus is mostly, again, around having that tight integration uh, with CRMs uh, and even at the user interface level. I mean, we, we we work pretty closely, not just at the API level, but even at the user interface level where people can launch uh, the quote and CPQ process right within the user interface of a CRM. That's great. I know we're almost out of time, but we've got one more that we'll quickly touch on and we'll go to Scott and Tammy on this, which is the issue of uh, PII and GDT PR and compliance related issues related to data. Uh, can you speak to what some of the steps and practices that you're seeing your customers and partners take to ensure best practices there? Scott, you want to take this first? I mean, I can I can touch on it a little bit. Um, I may, may steal some of your thunder here, but um, you know, a lot of what DocuSign has done uh, in terms of becoming kind of a leader in the in the compliance and and uh, all the letter super on InfoSec, you know, back in my time in spring, they achieved the the FedRAMP certification, right, which is one of the hardest uh, security protocols I think to, I think to clear, which allows you to sell into the federal government. Um, they also have data centers, I think, around the world as well. So depending on your residency requirements, right, you can request DocuSign to create your account, right, in a specific geography, right, which may help ultimately with, with some of those compliance aspects, right? 
Um, in terms of the solutions themselves, right? Um, you know, the, the security just inherent to the system in terms of it being an authenticated user to log in, uh, as well as the uh, great auditability to, to, to track, you know, who even opened or viewed a document in the system. Uh, and I'll let Tammy speak to some of the new products that are coming online that we're excited to also learn more about, like Monitor, right, which help you ultimately have a better, better grasp and arms around uh, the different uh, products and solutions that you're using, right, within the DocuSign um, product family to help, you know, if not be compliant out of the gate, at least to, to monitor and manage and, and, and make sure that you're staying up to date on those things. Great, great points. You did steal a little bit of thunder, but I actually appreciated hearing it from you too, Scott. Um, it, you know, to Scott's point, trust and security has always been the backbone of the DocuSign product. So there's always been these capabilities embedded, but we're also very active, um, as you mentioned, with government regulations in various different verticals and sub-verticals, as well as you mentioned FedRAM. Um, there's also other things within other other verticals that we're very active in as well, maintaining compliance. And then um, identity identity verification is also another key area that um, we are actively working through um, and have released product around as well. So there's it's it's always been um, the the main kind of value proposition behind DocuSign, but it's not just you know something that we do within marketing. It's actively part of our product roadmap and something that our customers have come to rely on us for. That's great. It's great to hear. Thank you so much, Tammy and Scott. And thanks to those that ask questions. Uh, this is going to wrap up our discussion. But before we leave, first, let me acknowledge that there are other upcoming webinars and events from all three of our companies. Uh, Mobile Force has a webinar coming up in about two weeks on sales rocket fuel on the theme of efficiency and speed. So please feel free to join us. You can follow us on LinkedIn. In fact, you can follow all of us uh, and go to our websites, which are all listed here, or reach out to any of the companies represented by simply emailing us at the info right here on the screen. So feel free to join us for our webinar later in the month. But really important, want to thank each of our uh, attendees. Thanks for joining and participating. And also want to thank each of our speakers. Uh, thanks so much, Tammy, Scott, and Jagadish for participating. This was a great discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.